Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Peak Design Everyday Backpack. And this is one of the most popular camera bags that's on the market. I see it everywhere that I go regardless of where I'm traveling. I featured this on the channel many years ago. I actually did a comparison video of it with the GORUCK GR1, which are two very different bags. Uh, so I've been excited to have a chance to revisit this bag. It's been updated since I first looked at it. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience using it over the past couple of weeks. So I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic, Peak Design definitely has a pretty distinct look and feel. This has a pretty modern, techy, sleek vibe. It's fairly functional, it does have handles and attachment points, but still manages to keep a pretty clean exterior that's gonna work well in a variety of environments, whether you're going into an office, exploring a city, traveling. And then as far as the materials, the bag feels very solidly built. This exterior fabric is a recycled 400D nylon that feels like it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage. It also has DWR built into the fabric, so it's gonna help keep your stuff protected from the elements. On the bottom, you have a more reinforced 900D fabric to just give you a little bit more peace of mind when you're placing the bag down. Then you also have some really well-protected and smooth working zippers. Peak Design, I don't believe, uses YKK, but regardless, these have continued to work well, and I've had a few different Peak Design bags over the years and haven't run into any issues. Continuing along the outside of the bag, you can really start to see Peak Design's focus on functionality. You have two external water bottle pockets, one on each side. These offer a pretty good amount of space. I was able to fit the 20 ounce water bottle that I typically have with me, and that fits in there fairly comfortably. I don't think anything much bigger would fit too easily. You might start to really put a lot of stress on the elastic area here, as the main compartment when it gets packed out will make it a little bit harder to put anything bulkier in here, but still the 20 ounce water bottle fits comfortably. I like that they also have this magnetic point here in the middle that helps keep the pockets close to the bag when they're not in use to just maintain a sleeker overall appearance. And then these pockets are also going to work well for maybe holding something like a tripod. One of the things that Peak Design includes with their bags is these straps that are meant to pair with a variety of attachment points around the bag. You've likely seen this in some of my other Peak Design videos, like their 30 liter travel backpack. They also include this functionality. So you have a loop here inside of the water bottle pocket, and then you have another loop here up top. So this could create a place to really secure your tripod or a jacket, and then you have loops along the front. So if you wanna store something like a yoga mat, you can do so. And then you have this kind of hidden magnetic compartment at the bottom, it has this magnetic closure, which you can use to store some more of these straps. I really like that you can either hide them, you can remove them, you can adjust the orientation of them. So these are meant to come across the bottom here. Again, another spot to hold a tripod, a jacket, you can put them along the front. So just a lot of great flexibility there to just be able to hold things that won't necessarily fit inside of the bag. And then one nice additional feature that's included here is this sort of additional lanyard uh, that you can use to attach your keys or a multi-tool. This is actually removable from this side handle here. Peak Design has this really cool ecosystem of kind of accessories that pair together. Many of their camera accessories are meant to kind of clip on and off the bags and your belt and all that. And so great to see that sort of incorporated here as well for something that I might be using a little bit more regularly. On the sides and top of the bag, you have some really great carrying handles. The ones on the side have a nice seat belt like material. They're a little bit thicker, so they're gonna be comfortable to hold even when the bag is a little bit more packed out. I like that you have one on each side, so it doesn't really matter which hand you're carrying the bag with, it's still gonna work out fine. And at the top, you have this slightly longer handle. I've always liked this on Peak Design's bags. It's just very easy to reach down and grab the bag when it's needed. It's also nice that it has this kind of accented material here. It just gives it a little bit of a classier look, in my opinion. Then you also have that same material on the lid with the Peak Design logo, so it's pretty subtle out of the way, which I like. And then moving into the capacity, the bag at its max capacity comes in at about 20 liters. It does have an adjustable volume, so you can compress it down to 17 liters if you're not carrying as much stuff. So it's a good 
daily bag size in my opinion. I was able to hold most of the items that I typically like to carry with me. And this does have a pretty fixed volume. It doesn't really collapse in on itself when it's empty, but even when it's packed out, it still manages to maintain a pretty sleek silhouette, making it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit, and carrying onto pretty much any domestic or international airline. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. This has been updated from the original version of the everyday backpack, so there's a little more padding included here now. It reminds me of some of the bags in their travel lineup, so I think that this works well. On the inside, you have kind of this soft fabric to help prevent moisture from building up. And then these straps are a little bit on the thinner side, particularly towards the top. So you might start to feel a little bit of fatigue if you really load this out with a lot of camera gear. At 20 liters for this size of the bag, I think that this still works okay. And then on the straps, you also have some attachment points where you can maybe hang on your sunglasses or attach additional accessories. And then you have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. It has this really interesting kind of aluminum hook system, which I don't feel is quite as secure as some of the buckle systems that I've seen in other bags, but it does make it very quick to get it on and off. And it's cool that you can kind of attach this here on one of the straps when it's not in use. One aspect of the straps that's pretty common on all of Peak Design's bags is this sort of hinge system at the top, which gives you a lot of mobility. This works particularly well with their travel bags as you might want to tuck the straps away behind the back panel. Can't really do that here, but I still think it adds a nice amount of mobility. I also like the shape of the straps here at the top and kind of how they rest on your shoulders. And then moving into the back panel, this has also been pretty comfortable. The padding here isn't as robust as some of the other EDC and camera bags that are on the market, but it does a pretty good job for the size of the bag. I actually like the implementation here compared to some of their travel bags. It just feels a little bit more breathable in my opinion. You have some fairly deep ridges on the padding and then this soft material that we also saw on the straps. Then down at the bottom, you have the ability to add a waist belt that's sold separately with the bag. For this side of the bag, I don't think that that's a necessity, but it's nice that you have the option to add one if you want. And then on this back paneling, I did notice that there's these magnets here on the back that kind of hold the straps in place, which is pretty nice when you're carrying this in briefcase mode and also work well for pairing it with the luggage pastor that you have here so that you can comfortably rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag has a really flexible layout in the main compartment and you do have the ability to access pretty much any area of that compartment very quickly due to the zipper system that the bag has. With that being said, there's not a ton of quick access pockets in the traditional sense. There's no kind of front zippered pocket here or one on the lid as you might find on some other kind of similarly styled bags. You do have a dedicated laptop compartment, which I am a big fan of. Makes it very easy to grab my device while I'm traveling or just out during my day to day. And I like that this compartment has a dedicated tech section there's like a little segment here that almost works, I guess, as a quick access pocket. I'm currently using it to hold all the items that are related to my laptop and tablet to keep everything together. So you have this larger section up front. It's gonna be great for kind of a power brick. That's what I have here is my laptop charger. And then a few slip pockets on the back with a nice kind of elastic fabric. In these compartments, I currently have my Magic Mouse, and then I have the cable to go with my laptop. And then you have the dedicated tablet and laptop area. There's a little divider sleeve in the middle, so it'll keep your devices separate. Not a ton of padding here, but still nice that there's at least some division. And you should be able to fit a 10 or 11 inch tablet. Currently what I have here is my iPad mini, and that fits in there comfortably. And then you have the laptop area. Cool thing about this bag is that it's actually an adjustable compartment. So if you have a larger device, you can adjust the floor to better fit your device. I like that this means that the device is gonna be suspended off the bottom of the ground. So if you drop your laptop in, you place your bag down a little bit harder, you shouldn't have to worry about any damage. And then the sleeve itself does offer a good amount of padding. And so currently what I have here is my 13 inch MacBook Air. But even with the way that I have the sleeve currently adjusted, there's still some leftover space here. So pulling my device out, now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside as well as to the mechanism that you can use to adjust the floor. You can pull this flap up and then Peak Design has some good instructions on how you can kind of adjust that. So pretty nice, unique feature that I hadn't seen in a ton of other bags. Regardless, uh, with the amount of space that's offered here and the padding that's included, it feels like my device is gonna be well protected while I'm on the go. And then moving into the main compartment, you have two zippers along the side 
that provide access to any section of the bag depending on what you're trying to grab. So you can access it from either side and then you also have a buckle at the top. So this is a really interesting, useful layout. I'm definitely a fan of this style um, as it just makes it easy to grab whatever you need. Before I actually dive into the organizational options that are provided, did wanna just call out some of the security features that are offered here with the zipper pulls. Peak Design has these zippers that you can release. There's a little kind of buckle system there. You can thread it through this loop at the top and then secure it and that will give you a little bit of deterrence. Um, you know, th that's one of the things with this bag. If you're carrying a lot of sensitive camera gear, there is a lot of access so it's good to have at least a little bit of security while you're on the go if you're not accessing your stuff in the moment. Um, so that's a great system there. And then the buckle system here at the top works very well. As I mentioned earlier, this is an adjustable volume. So it has this magnetic latch that is very easy to access and secure. So it hooks on there magnetically. You just pull up and that releases the buckle. And then you have these four different levels that will allow you to adjust depending on what you're carrying. So if you're not carrying as much stuff, you can bring it all the way down here to the bottom. I've typically had it at about this second level here. That's typically what I carry. I don't like to fill it up too, too much towards the top of the bag because at this level is where it starts to feel like it's not as tight fitting. It is secured by the magnet, but you, this is an area where once it starts to rain, if these sides are not tucked in, it can be a little bit risky. So I always just prefer to secure it down as much as possible. I don't carry quite as much stuff with this style of bag. So something to call out, but I think that this buckle system provides a nice amount of flexibility. It's a very smooth entrance and it does feel like it latches on securely. And so as we start taking a look at the organization in this main area, one of the things to keep in mind is that this is kind of a camera focused bag. It's interesting to use this for EDC. It can work for everyday carry. That's actually how I have it set up as I don't typically carry a ton of camera gear and I think it's a really functional and cool looking bag. So it can work for EDC, but a lot of the organization that's included is meant to cater more to a photography audience. So something that I wanted to call out. And so taking a look at the top first, because this is where I'm usually accessing the bag most during the day. I have some of the items that I grab most regularly here at the top. So I have my Beat Studio wireless headphones. I have an Alpaca admin pouch. I could also put my Evergoods Cap 1, maybe my uh, Civic Access pouch 2, anything that I wanna grab here from the top. And then I also have my sunglasses with their case. As you know, that there's not really another quick access area that can hold them. So I typically just have them resting here near the top and then I can also reach in and grab them from the sides if I wanna to get to my sunglasses quickly. One of the cool things about these zippers is that they're meant to allow you to swing the bag around while you're still wearing it to be able to access different sections of the bag without taking it all the way off. And so I'll go ahead and just open it up completely so you can get a better view of all the different sections that it has. So the layouts are kind of mirrored on each side. On the flaps, you have some built-in organization. So there's a couple of magnetic slip pockets, one on each side, same size and layout. And so they have this magnet in the middle that helps keep them secure and this nice sort of uh, elastic fabric. And in this compartment, I currently have just a cable to charge my phone. And then below that, you have a zipper pocket, offers a good amount of space. At the moment I have here a portable battery that attaches to my phone, as well as a wall adapter that I have to charge my laptop, my tablet, and just a backup phone charger as well. Inside of this compartment, you have some additional built-in organization, some slip pockets here that are gonna be really well-sized for something like extra batteries for your camera or SD cards. So again, the camera focus of the bag, you can use them for other small accessories, but that's what they feel like they were designed for. On the other side of the bag, same layout, so another slip pocket here. And here I have an additional cable just to have a backup, one for my tablet, one for my phone. And then at the bottom, same sort of pocket uh, where I currently just have a uh, deck of playing cards here at the bottom. And then I tossed in my pen and a flashlight. And here you have the same sort of slip pockets. They're pretty shallow. So again, just meant to be more for the battery, the SD card. So nice to have those built-in pockets on the side. And then at the top, you have kind of this hidden elastic compartment that's a little bit smaller perfect spot for something like my airpods that's definitely what i keep in there every time i go out with the bag 
And then beyond that, you start to get into the adjustable layout that is common to many of the camera bags that I featured on the channel. Peak Design has a really unique approach to this, which I am a big fan of. So they have these Velcro dividers that you can adjust in however uh, many different ways you want. You can use one of them, you can use two of them. I believe three are actually included with the bag. And then I really love that they have these sections that flip up to actually divide the dividers a little bit more. It's a really creative, useful idea. I've always been a fan of that in their bags. And so you can definitely see how different camera setups will start to mix in here really nicely with a variety of lenses and bodies. Um, Peak Design has some great examples on their sites and I have used it as a camera bag to hold my mirrorless camera, um, but mainly it's used for my drone, my GoPro, things like that, and for my EDC items. So at the top, I had this divider flipped up, which is what I was kind of trying to use to separate some of the items that I'm grabbing most regularly from the top. And then you can see how you can access them from either side if you want to. And then in this middle section, I just left the dividers down and I use this to hold the TomTok Tech Pouch that I've been using a lot as of late. So even with all of the dividers in, there's still a good amount of space for bulkier things if you wanna carry those. And then all the way at the bottom, I have my DJI Mavic Mini with its hard shell case. And then so I like the idea of having these sort of shelves for my stuff. It kind of helps me stay more organized, particularly because the bag is designed in this way. I really wanna take advantage and use it the way that it was intended. But you can remove all of these and just have a more open space if you wanted to just use it as a more traditional kind of everyday carry bag. At 20 liters or 17 liters when it's compressed, this is definitely not the size that I would use too much for minimal travel. I suppose I could place a packing cube in there and kind of get away with it. They do have the larger version of the bag which might be better suited for it and would give you still some flexibility to hold some of the camera gear that you might want to take with you on a trip. Um, but in general, I think it's a layout that offers a lot of flexibility. I really like the design approach to it and that you can sort of just have it cater to the layout that you're looking for, particularly if you're into the photography game, if you have a lot of the equipment that you're accessing regularly, if you want to keep it secure and in a really sleek package, then this layout is going to work well for you. But even if you're just looking for a durable and sleek everyday carry bag for your laptop or some of your other essentials, it can work well for that. So. Really great job overall. I know this bag has kind of been around for a little while now, and it's great to have a chance to revisit it after having seen some of the latest options on the market. And in my opinion, it still holds up really well. It offers a lot of unique benefits and a really slick style. And if you're looking again for something durable that's gonna work well for a variety of purposes, this is gonna be an excellent option to take a look at. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Peak Design Everyday Backpack over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on the company's site or sites like Amazon, Best Buy, REI for about $280, which is definitely premium pricing. It is an investment, but you're getting a really high quality bag with an impressive feature set, and it's also gonna compare well to other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Peter McKinnon and Nomadic 25 liter camera pack. That's another premium priced option that has an excellent build quality, really weather resistant materials, a very robust harness system. It checks off a lot of the same boxes as this with you know big external water bottle pockets, luggage pass through, a dedicated and well padded laptop compartment. It has a little bit of a different philosophy as far as the organization. Both of them have a flexible layout. The uh, Peter McKinnon bag focuses more on a modular style, so you actually can buy the cubes that are configurable, you can remove them, you can add them. Whereas the Peak Design bag actually includes the dividers, which I think is a nice touch, and the way that they're implemented is very creative. I also like that this one provides more quick access to the bag than the Peter McKinnon one. That one definitely believes in just, you know, you lay your bag down flat, you open it up, grab what you need, you can reach in from the top, there's a nice quick access area. So it just, to me, has a simpler layout then this one, both of them have a pretty rigid uh, structure as well, so they're not slim bags per se, but really high quality, great for camera gear, and if you're looking for something that's maybe just like slightly more tactical, because you know Peter McKinnon has sort of the uh, webbing along the front, and it just got that sort of a vibe, or if you want something that's gonna be a little more modular as far as how you can organize it, and it's gonna give you maybe just a little bit more built-in space, then the Nomadic and Peter McKinnon option is gonna be a solid one to consider. Another bag this made me think of is the Wandered Provoke, which has been one of my favorite camera bags of the past couple of years. 
That one is offered in a couple of different sizes. My favorite is the 21 liter size as it can be expanded up to about 25 or 26 liters to give you a little bit more flexibility, but then it's pretty compact for the day to day. I really like the side pocket that Wandered offers with their bag to be able to grab your camera quickly. That one has a really great ecosystem of accessories. So a well padded camera cube that you can con configure with a bunch of dividers. It's got a great laptop compartment. In addition to the roll top opening, it has the ability to open flat. So very similar, I guess, as far as that sort of multiple access points to this bag here. That one definitely has more of an adventure feel. It's got the tote straps at the top, the roll top opening, gives just a little bit more peace of mind as far as the weather resistant. That one also has a very weather resistant tarpaulin exterior, well protected YKK zippers. So just a really kind of rugged adventure focused bag. And if you're looking for something with that sort of an aesthetic or that's just gonna give you a little more peace of mind with the weather resistance, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to consider. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Brevity Jumper Photo, which is a really great camera bag, particularly because it has a more minimal or simple aesthetic. It just looks like a classic backpack, but it has camera features built in. So it has a configurable compartment with dividers so that it'll match up with all of your equipment. If you have a lens, a body, it has a side zippered opening so you can quickly grab your camera when you need quick shots. It has straps at the bottom that will allow you to attach a tripod, external water bottle pocket, a separate laptop compartment, luggage pass through, a lot of the same sort of features, uh, but again, with just sort of that classic backpack look, it looks like a Herschel or a Jansport backpack, so it's a little more subdued, particularly if you get it in one of the darker colors. So aesthetically, very different from this one here. It also comes in at a slightly lower price point. I think the build quality on the Peak Design and some of the features are a little more impressive, but if you're just looking for something simpler that can still keep your camera gear organized and protected, that's gonna be an awesome option to consider. With that being said, the Peak Design Everyday Backpack still holds up really well against all those options. And if you're looking for a durable and versatile everyday bag that's gonna provide easy access to your camera gear and other essentials, and this is gonna be an excellent option to take a look at. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Everyday Backpack and how it compares to some of the other popular camera and tech bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I want to thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.